Hey folks, in this video we're going to learn how to actually make appointment slots in your Google Calendar so that if you want people to book appointments with you, you can do that and have it just all set up and automatically run within your uh, Google Calendar. So when you're in your Google Calendar, make sure you set your um, your calendar to week, or I find this works best to kind of really see things. Uh, I select Create, and I come down here to Appointment Schedule. It's going to pop up a page, it's going to start with this week, um, and we're going to just try to work right here and say, uh, we're going to say, you know, one-on-ones. Maybe I'm meeting with a bunch of students. <clears throat> All right, so I can set the duration for each of these possible meetings. And so I might do, uh, maybe I just want 15 minutes, right? Um, if I want something different, I can come down to custom and I can change this. Maybe I'm going to be really weird and I'm going to say, I want 21 minutes, not 20, not 22, but 21. I could actually also do hours, but I am not going to do that. So I hit done got our custom meeting for 21 minutes. Now it gives you this this um, repeated week, it defaults to repeated weekly, which means once if you set it up like this, then it's set up, you know, at ongoing week after week. But you can change that. You just click on repeat weekly and say, nope, this doesn't repeat. And then it's going to default to like the next day being like, oh, this is when you want to do it. And you're like, nope, that's not when I want to do it. So maybe you go when you select a week, you know, um, or maybe you know, like, all right, this is the week that I want to do these one on one. So I'm going to select the first date. All right, I have the first date. Uh, then I want to select the window. So, okay, uh, this day I know I want to do, I want to start actually at 830 and I want to end the first batch. I'm going to end at noon. I'm going to want some lunch. I'm going to hit the little add and this is going to give me another period during the day so i might go okay i want to start up i'm going to take a long lunch and i'm going to do some other errands so i'm going to start up at two and then i'm going to go to six o'clock all right boom um now i can add another date and i can say all right let's do the seventh and the seventh will kind of start again so you can look at your schedule and customize what makes sense and notice over here on my calendar it is starting to chunk those things out so all of this is looking good. I want to make sure the the time the uh, which time zone makes sense. Oh, that's great. The scheduling wing window defaults to 60 days in advance to four hours before. So I can change this again. I can click on it and I can actually be like, no, I want people months in advance. I actually, you know what? I want people 123 days in advance to be able to book this. Right? That's the so. If it's 124 days, they won't be able to book this. But if it's 123, booking is on. And I might change this. I'll be like, nope, actually, given what my schedule is, I want it, you know, I want the window to close. Uh, let's go with 15 hours before. All right. These are checked. That means that's what they're set to. If I don't care, if I just want to leave it entirely open, I can just uncheck those boxes. All right. Now comes to some other features that I think are really important. Uh, booked appointment settings. So the first is buffer time. This is the time in between appointments. Now we know sometimes meetings can run over. We know sometimes there's lots of different issues that can happen. So I'm apt to click this and I am apt to, you know, maybe I want a, I don't know, I want a seven minute buffer between meetings. Um, and again, you can do that as minutes or hours. And then uh, the maximum bookings to per day. So maybe I'm like, okay, I don't really want in a given day more than a set amount. I can click this box and I can adjust that one. Maybe I only want six meetings a day. Maybe that, that's where I tap out. Maybe I want less. Um, or maybe I don't worry and just see how the schedule fills up. And then finally, there is color. Um, and that is if I want to indicate that what appointments these are, I am just going to change. Maybe I want them to be yellow. Notice they'll show up yellow over here. Everything's hunky dory. I'm going to hit next. And now it's going to ask for some additional information. So um, booking page, photo and name. So notice it has me. Um, I can choose a location. So this might be 
Um, I might say in-person meeting, I might say phone call or none or to be specified later. If you're doing something like a Zoom meeting, this is where I would say none or to be specified later, and I'd put the Zoom link in the description, right? So the description is right down here. And if I want that uh, Zoom link in there, I can do something like here is the Zoom link. I might add additional information, um, such as the meeting ID room or if there's a pa password, but I might just do the Zoom link and then link that pop it in there, boom. Now I know at least, you know, the Zoom link will be in the description in the invitation. All right, so all of this is, is looking good, looking great. The booking form, here I can have them provide, uh, or I can ask, you know, when they fill this out, they need their name, their first name, last name, email. Um, might be useful to do email verification so that it makes sure that it actually, <coughs> uh, that it actually, they get it um, to make sure they put in the right email, that kind of thing. Uh, and then I might add an item. And so it's asking, well, what else would you want to add? Phone number or custom item? Now this can be really nice. Um, I might do something like uh, provide uh, a link to the material to review. Maybe I'm doing reviews with students or it could be provide, um, provide you know, the topic of discussion. Great. Then I can just, if I want to just leave it as is, I can. If I can make it required, I can also do that. Add item. And then if I had another thing, you know, and you could play around with this and add some features to it. All right. So this is the booking form. Um, and in fact, because this is the booking form, this is probably the wrong place to put the Zoom link. So I'm going to take that out real quick. Um, it's going to end up on the booking confirmation and reminders. All right. Booking form is all set. And let us go down to, so the description might be more an explanation of um, book these meetings for those reasons and be prepared for X, Y, Z, right? <clears throat> they have that. They know what the, you know, this is what the is going to be on that page. And then we come down to confirmations and reminders. All right, so uh, both people will get a calendar inv invitation. Uh, the person who made the appointment will get a reminder uh, email before the appointment, one day before. And you can do this, so it defaults to one day before. You can change that to a variety of different things. Depending on you know what, you, what your considerations are, you might do one day before, and then you just might also do as you can see, it defaults to 10 minutes before. Maybe even, you know, get a little crazy and do 15 minutes before. Whatever. Um, all of that makes sense. Um, and I need to correct myself one last time. For the location, um, where, where are we putting the Zoom link, right? We want to put it actually in the location. So if we choose a location and we choose uh, in-person meeting, it now says add a location and it's required. This is where we want to put our Zoom link so that when they get the invitation where it says location, this Zoom link will be right there. We can add additional information and description as well. Um, that should also be part of the invitation, but the ideal place is in that location space. Um, all right, so we've got everything set up here. We've got the location, the description of what's going on, what the booking form is going to look like, the confirmations that are going to be sent. All of it's looking great. We're going to hit save. And when we hit save, it's going to pop this up right now. This is this is the information we need to know, right? So again, it's reconfirming things. Um, it's telling us we can edit that. So we, you know, if we want, we can go and edit that. It's we can open our booking page, which we're definitely going to do and take a look at that. All right. So this is the booking page. We're in December, so we're not going to see it here. Um, remember, we booked it for February and we can tell that it's February because these are days that are not crossed out. So notice the calendar gives information. It says, oh, you know, these are days they can't book, but on the 6th and the 7th, game on. Right. And so here are the different meeting times that are available. And so if so, if when you share this link with students, they can go in, they can take a look, they can say, oh, 1050, I want to book this. And so 
notice there's the zoom link right there. And here's the information. I can say it provides some little enter that answer and I can hit book. Now I'm booking an appointment with myself, which is a little strange, but whatever. It's booked the appointment with me. It tells me when, it tells me where, um, it tells me if I need to change or cancel my appointment, I can click on that link. And actually I'm gonna do that just for a point of reference. It says, are you sure you wanna do this, right? We're gonna dismiss for now. So hit close. That's the booking page, really simple. I wanna go back into here and I also want to show, you know, it gives you the share feature. And so again, it gives you some different pieces of information. You can share the booking page by sending it, sending people the link or by adding a button to your website. Um, in this case, you know, you can do either um, a single booking page or, um, and this is a case of if you have several different booking pages or all appointment schedules. And if you wanna see what that looks like, you can always click on the preview. And the preview will say, oh, here's, here's your options. I can click on it, and again, it brings me back to this calendar. All right, so this is what I'm looking for. I'm going to copy link. I'm going to hit done, and that link is what I would put into a new tab, and it would bring me to, once again, that booking page. Um, so the key piece here is just to make sure when you're sharing with students or whoever you're sharing it with to say, like, you've got a, you've got you've got to make sure you go to pages where you see the little circles, the indicators that those are available appointment slots. Um, but this link you can pop into your, you know, you can pop into your course, you can share it with people, and now you're able to have them book appointments with you through this tool. Um, and again, you can always go back and start to edit it. You can delete it, which is of course what I'm gonna do right after this, but just um, know that it has a lot of flexibility and is pretty useful. Um, the other thing I will just show here is notice on the calendar, it has this little grid form, like it's visually telling me um, that these are open appointments to be potentially um, potentially selected by students. I can always click on it and of course um, it gives me all that information again. So I hope this was helpful. Um, it's a really great tool. It's cheaper that, you know, it's, it's pretty easy to set up and it's cheaper than uh, certainly Calendly and other types of tools like that. So hope this is helpful. Let me know if you have any questions.